Bishop Persico, President Taylor, trustees, faculty, staff, friends, and family, and especially to the graduating students. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today and the honorary degree. I also want to thank my family, friends, my wife, Kathy, and my friend, business partner, and cousin, Mike McCormick. I'm very proud to be part of the Gannon family. Gannon has a reputation for transforming lives. I know that all of you have transformed your life since coming to Gannon. You received an excellent education that I am confident will lead to a great career. You have met many people and made lifelong friends. You not only learned a lot, but you also gave back much to your fellow students and community. I want to share with you one of my most recent experiences since I have been on the board of Gannon. Father Kosicki starts off each board meeting with a prayer or a scripture that helps to guide us as we do the work of Gannon and has helped set the tone for this speech. Father Kosicki talks about our path of life, starts with self-awareness, learning who we are, which can lead to self-acceptance, being who you are and not comparing yourself, which can allow us to be a self-gift, giving oneself away with generosity and joy. For me and maybe for you, this is a great and important principle for living life. I want to share with you my path and journey on self-awareness and getting to know myself. One of the sayings that I think about and try to remember is, I am not much, but I'm all I think about. I don't mean this in a self-defeating way, but as a reminder that I am just a man among many and that my default mode is to think first of myself. I believe it's normal to do that. This is to me one of my issues and fundamental to knowing who I am. I like to joke that I don't have issues, I have a subscription. For me, getting to know my issues, both good and bad, help me to gain a better understanding of who I am and develop an acceptance of who I am. Here is a recent example. When Dr. Taylor asked me to be the commencement speaker, my first thought in actual words to him were in all honesty, no, I'm not interested. Why? Because underneath I was scared and nervous that I would fail. I wasn't good enough. I wasn't smart enough. I didn't deserve it. And if I did accept, I would drive myself crazy trying to develop a creative and insightful commencement speech. This all went through my head in less than five seconds. These were my issues. After a couple more seconds, I said, of course I would, and immediately felt grateful, humbled, and honored. How did this happen so fast in my mind? For me, it was years of developing my own set of principles, sayings, guidelines, even quips that keep me on track and result in, as Father Kosicki suggests, a level of self-acceptance. A week or so later, after talking to Dr. Taylor, I was starting to feel pretty good about myself. In fact, I said to my wife, Kathy, I bet in your wildest dreams, you never thought you would be married to someone who is getting an honorary degree and is this year's commencement speaker. Without missing a beat, she said, Pierre, you're not in my wildest dreams. That, my friends, is ego and ego deflation. For me, I have to remember that ego can be an acronym for easing God out. Ego is one of my issues, but common to most of us. I hope you all have someone in your life who lovingly keeps you right-sized. In my research of commencement speeches, what was evident 
is that you should keep it short and try to leave the audience with something that they may remember and value. I am hoping that some of these sayings, or maybe only one, might stay with you as you continue your search for self-awareness, self-acceptance, and giving of oneself. The first saying for me is, do the next right thing, whatever that is. Sometimes for me, it is as simple as when I think about someone, one of my kids, my 97-year-old mother, a friend who is having a tough time, I give them a call, I send an email, or even, believe it or not, I send a card. When I am wrong, I try to promptly admit it. Probably one of my toughest. I also like the phrase, you can't do the right thing the wrong way. Trying to find perfection is an impossible task. I don't know if you remember the Lexus car commercial whose tagline was, relentless pursuit of perfection. I thought that was the way to go, but learned later on that in search of excellence was a much better guideline. Excellence is more about we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. It also allows for mistakes and corrections not perfection. I am sure that in your time at Gannon that you have learned this concept. In my career, leading a consumer goods beverage distribution company in Madison, Wisconsin, we had a story that we shared among our leadership team. The story is about a ham and egg breakfast. In this breakfast, the pig was committed and the chicken was involved. You might want to think about that one. We wanted people on our team who are pigs. When you work with a team, having people who are committed can lead to an organization that clicks. Click is hard to describe. I am sure you have all experienced it. You and the other person get it. Not a lot of explaining or getting on board is necessary. They and you just get it and there is a definite click. This is not a small thing. High performance organizations and the need for people to be part of something meaningful is a fundamental goal as we learn who we are. Organizational cultures are or should be based on establishing click. When you have it, you know it, and when you don't, you need to figure out how to get it. That is part, also part of leadership, being vulnerable enough and comfortable enough with yourself that if you don't have click, you are willing to be vulnerable enough to describe to your team your own shortfalls in achieving the desired outcomes. Searching for click is one of the biggest leadership challenges. The best example I can give you is my relationship with my business partner, Mike, who I mentioned earlier. Mike has a very unique capacity to see around the corner. Trying to see what he sees could be a challenge, but with perseverance, this ability can lead to real success. I knew I finally had click with Mike when he said, you know, the thing for the thing, and I knew exactly what he meant. Another saying along the same lines is when attending meetings. I have to listen to everyone because I don't know who in the room or on Zoom is going to provide the exact insight that is needed. Of course, like many other people, I tend to not listen and think mostly about what I want to say, one of my issues. We have a sign at our facility in Madison that is one of my favorites. Never doubt that a small group of people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. I am especially proud of the small and growing group in Erie and Gannon that are helping to redefine Erie. Another saying from a popular book, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, 
that has stayed with me is start with the end in mind. All of my activities, strategies, commitments should be aimed at living a life of meaning. According to Socrates, a life unexamined is not worth living. Another favorite that I actually saw on a competitor's wall is don't confuse activity with accomplishment. I have often seen organizations, groups, and even institutions that are busy with lots of activities but little accomplishments. What I like to call a whole lot of nothing. My wife Kathy and I, when we first retired, lived and traveled on a sailboat for almost two years. This was one of my goals. I didn't grow up sailing, but I figured if an average person could sail, then so could I. I figured you were just one harbor away from the rest of the world. If I could sail to Conneaut, Ohio, I probably could sail anywhere. One of the sayings and questions I heard while traveling with Kathy was, what's the difference between an ordeal and an adventure? The answer is your attitude. How true for me. In the sailing world, they frequently say, never around, never aground. Boats are safe in harbors, but they aren't designed to be in harbors. I think the same holds true for us. Another quip I try to live by is, if I meet three people that irritate me in one day, then I'm the problem. This is another one of my issues, and perhaps one of yours. Occasionally, I will meet two irritating people in looking for number three, and it may only be 7.30 in the morning. Perhaps you have also experienced this. It is a good time for me to look at myself and reset my thinking and think about what is really going on in my life and in my head. Through a moment of quiet and prayer, I have learned that I can start a new day anytime I want. In our journey to better know ourselves, we will have many lessons and blessings that come our way. Your education at Gannon has helped to define who you are today, a strong faith, a balanced ego, and an attitude of gratitude will serve you well. So, as we go on the journey of self-awareness, self-acceptance, and self-giving, remember, as I learned from Mike McCormick, getting a chance for success is important, but giving someone else a chance is even more important. Having someone believe in you is important, but believing in someone is more important. Getting an opportunity in life is important, but giving an opportunity in life is more important. So, as you move on to the next stage of life, consider these thoughts. We all have issues, and some of us have subscriptions. Knowing what they are and getting comfortable with them is how we get to know and accept ourselves. Being authentic is important. Do the next right thing. You can't do the right thing the wrong way. Be a pig, not a chicken. Will life be an adventure or an ordeal? If you meet three irritating people in one day, it's likely you're the problem. Stay in your own hula hoop, and I'll add one more. Not my monkeys, not my circus. Work hard and have fun. I'm confident that this class of Gannon will not confuse activity with accomplishments. You have gotten it done with the constraints of COVID-19. I'm sure you will never forget this year and all that you have learned. Start your own personal journey with the end in mind. Congratulations, Golden Knights. Stay safe, stay smart.